right off the bat, I think it's important that I mention that I am blocked by this person on Twitter. I've never tweeted this person. I've never commented on their videos. I've never been in contact with this person by the name of Riley. But we're going to be responding to him, her, him, her, I don't know, uh, today. Uh, because I'm talking about something that I've never talked about. And that's sexual preferences. Today, you're going to be informed on what you should be sexually attracted to. Uh, this video is one of the most flawed videos I've ever seen. And I'm not even going to respond to every single point because it's so mind-boggling retarded. Mind-boggling retarded? That didn't even make any sense. Horrible word phrasing, I know. Would you date someone who's trans? Would you date someone who's black? Would you date someone who's fat? Would you date someone who's disabled? Would I date someone who's trans? No. Would I date someone who's black? Sure, maybe. I don't have any problem with someone who's black. I wouldn't say no to that question because there have been women of different skin colors, of different ethnicities, different race, that I've been attracted to. Would I date someone who's fat? Depends. I would most likely say no, assuming that they're at a proper weight where they couldn't do things that I thoroughly enjoy in my life, like hiking. If someone is really, really fat and overweight, let's just say 300 some pounds, no, I'm not gonna date someone who's 300 pounds. I'm not interested in dating someone who's 300 pounds because they're not gonna be able to go on an eight mile hike with me. There are things in my day-to-day -day life that I wanna be able to do with my significant other, and if they can't do those things at all to any degree, why would I date them? Would I date someone who's disabled? Probably, most likely, no. Is it wrong for me to say no, I'm not interested in dating someone who is, is high functioning with autism? Does that make me inherently a bad person? No, it does not. Now, honestly, I don't know what your answer is to those questions, but I've met a surprising number of people who would say no to all or at least some of them. Their argument is that it's just a preference and that you can't control who you're attracted to. I think most of the time that this is brought up, it's in regards to race. I'll link to a couple really good videos in the description about racial dating preferences, but in this video, I wanna talk about our other biases. Let's start with trans people. Would you date a trans person, honestly? Think about it for a second. Okay, got your answer? Well, if you said no, I'm sorry, but that's pretty discriminatory. But I wanna start by saying that no one, no one, no fucking one, especially you, Riley, no one is entitled to have sex with you at all. Because that's what I feel like the thrust of this entire goddamn video, as m moronic as it is, is that somehow sex is an entitled thing. That you, have to be attracted to this person sexually. We have to force sexuality where it doesn't exist, where it doesn't exist in terms of sexual preference. Preferences are not discriminatory. Can they be discriminatory? Sure, there could be racial biases, maybe behind their reason for not wanting to date someone who maybe is black, but to label my personal preference for why I would not date a trans person is not in any way discrimin discriminating against trans people. My preference does not harm anyone. Does not harm and it does not hurt. Two very important words, harm and hurt. My preferences don't do any of that shit. I don't personally choose what my dick gets erected by. If I'm attracted to a woman and I get an erection from that, that's what I'm aroused by. I'm a a attracted to a woman and I see her vagina and I'm attracted to that vagina. I want to make it very clear that you cannot force someone to be sexually attracted to you. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying you're a horrible person who hates trans people. There was probably a time in my life when I said I wouldn't date a trans person. But since then, I've thought critically about it and changed my mind. I could sit here and show you photos of conventionally attractive trans people. There are definitely trans people who you would never know are trans unless they told you because they pass for cis. And that might convince some of you. But I think arguing that you would only like a trans person if you didn't know they were trans is a poor argument. I think you could be attracted to any trans person, whether they pass or not. I think the main concern that people have in regards to dating a trans person is that they won't have the genitals that they expect. Because we associate penises with men and vaginas with women, some people think they could never date a trans man with a vagina or a trans woman with a penis. But I think that people are more than their genitals. I think that you could feel attraction to someone without knowing what's between their legs. And if you were to say that you're only attracted to people with vaginas or people with penises, it really feels like you're reducing people just to their genitals. Me not wanting to date a woman who has a dick is not reducing them to what's between their legs. Do you not understand that sexual romantic relationships are vital in many relationships? In fact, sexual compatibility is something that's extremely important, is sexual compatibility. If I date a woman 
who has a dick. How am I sexually compatible to that? I'm not. Despite popular belief, I don't want a dick in my ass. It seems that you think sexual compatibility should be forced onto people. That I must be, I must be attracted to this woman, but not if I'm even attracted to a trans woman with a dick, that I must have to be able to have sex with her. Because if I deny having sex with a woman who has a dick, that makes me discri that makes me discriminating uh, discriminatory against them. Like what the fuck ever happened to consent? If I don't want to have sex with someone because they have a dick, I don't want to have sex with them. It's that simple. There's no racial bias behind that. There's no transphobia. There's no homophobia. And this is coming with someone who's actually done something with a man before. So I personally found that it's not my cup of tea. I don't want to do that stuff. I don't get aroused. I don't get horny. I don't. There's nothing. I don't. That, I can see an attractive man, but I'm not attracted to them on a romantic or sexual level in terms of my preferences. That's why I'm attracted to women. I'm attracted to vagina. I can't choose that. That's my biological, evolutionary, um, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't even know. You know what I'm trying to say. I think a large part of my audience would agree with me that sexual incomp incompatibility is a big deal breaker. If you're not sexually compatible with a person, why the fuck are you dating them? You're kind of objectifying them, but you're thinking of them more as genitals than objects. So I guess you're kind of genitalifying them? Anyway, my point is we have implicit biases that we were raised with or that we developed over time and they can be hard to get rid of. And I think this can be especially prominent within the queer community. Gay men often pride themselves on being disgusted by vaginas and the same goes for lesbian women with penises. It's difficult because some queer people have built their sexual identities on these repulsions, but I don't think they're innate at all. If you met someone who was extremely attractive, had a great personality, but didn't have the genitals that you wanted, you might be surprised to find that it isn't a deal breaker. As someone who is trans and gay, sometimes people ask me with a very accusatory tone if I would date a girl with a penis. Because there's this stereotype that trans lesbians are just predatory cis men creeping on cis women. But the thing is, I absolutely could be attracted to a woman with a penis. I could be attracted to any woman, cis or trans. If I find you attractive, I don't care what you have down there. But we if you want to be sexually compatible with every single type of genital and every single type of gender and every single type of sexuality that there is, by all means, kudos. Kudos to you, Riley. But that's not how the world works. You can't make everybody think in the same way that you do. As I said at the start, you can't force sexual preferences. You can't force sexuality. You know, we always joke on this channel about me having pe putting peanut butter on my dick and me having sex with my dogs. But here's a legitimate question. If I choose not to have sex with my dog, does that mean that I hate animals? No, of course not. That's not to say that I can't find someone who's trans attractive. Without sexual compatibility, how am I supposed to make that relationship actually work out? We know that sexual orientations are more innate than learned. They're more nature and less nurture. Gay conversion therapy has been proven not to work, but you can unlearn your own prejudices. It just takes time and conscious effort. And the way that we talk about potentially dating trans people has a lot in common with the way we discuss other preferences. Oh, Riley, you're filled with irony right here. It's funny that you mentioned gay conversion therapy. And you're right, gay, con gay, con ther gay conversion therapy doesn't really work. So why in this video are you attempting to force someone to be sexually interested in somebody else just because it somehow fits your, that it fits your uh, social views? Your social views, how you view people sexually, sexual preferences, is not applicable to other people around you. This is just such a sad video to see. Saying that you're not attracted to fat people isn't innate. It's informed by a society that tells you that being thin is ideal. Everything in the media you consume is bombarding you with messages that skinny is beautiful and fat is ugly. And Perhaps, maybe, I do believe that there are societal expectations that we put standards on women and men for size and uh, on weight. But as we've seen in the past, I don't know, few years, the whole glorify me because I'm fucking 300, 350 pounds, I'm super fat and can barely walk generation is slowly increasing. Hashtag fat pride, right? I don't give a shit if a woman's a bit overweight. I like a little bit of tummy pudge. But I wouldn't want to date someone who's extremely, extremely fat 
because I said in the start, they can't do the things that I love to do. Even the nicest of people absorb these messages to some degree. But again, if you find someone attractive and really enjoy spending time with them, there's no reason why their weight should be a factor. Especially since we know that the relationship between weight and health is extremely complex and you really can't make any moral judgments on a person based on their weight. And lastly, let's talk about disabled people. Disabilities come in a very wide range from being deaf to being in a wheelchair to only having one arm. And I think it's pretty ridiculous to say that you couldn't be attracted to any person who has any of those disabilities. No one is saying that you can't be attracted to someone who is overweight or fat. No one is saying that you can't be attracted to someone who is disabled. I've been attracted to a woman in a goddamn wheelchair. Disabilities can happen to anyone. Someone you're extremely attracted to today could become disabled tomorrow, and that shouldn't make your attraction to them disappear. Though if it does, it might not be because of them, but rather because you have some preconceived ideas about disabled people that are just inaccurate and harmful. Unsurprisingly, this is another case of the media telling you that a certain group isn't attractive. Disabled people are rarely romantic leads. Their stories in movies and TV shows are often tragic, but that doesn't reflect the reality that disabled people can be happy and have dating lives and be attractive. Now, if you're not attracted to someone, you're not attracted to them. I'm not going to tell you that you have to be attracted to this fat person or that trans person or that disabled person. But the more you work at unlearning your own prejudices, the more you'll be able to see people from these groups as people rather than tired stereotypes. Unlearning our own biases doesn't happen overnight, and I don't have a step-by-step -step instruction guide for you. But I think if you can accept that these prejudices exist in all of us, even you, you can identify them when they come up and work to change how you think about them. It will most likely be be a long, slow process, but I think it's worth it. Because these dating preferences are ultimately harmful to people who don't fit into your box of what a conventionally attractive person looks like. Oh my god, the irony level is too goddamn high! It's over nine fucking thousand here! My biggest problem is that you try to convince people that you should find certain genitalia attractive. You're doing the exact same thing that you claim to be against here in regards to gay conversion therapy. Attempting to force someone to be attracted to something that they're not. I'm open to be attracted to whoever I find physically attractive. But for me to say no to someone based upon certain preferences that I have, like me not wanting to date someone who's high-functioning autistic. There's someone out there who's into that. There's someone out there who will love that person. There's someone out there who will want to date that person. But that person isn't me. And to force myself to be sexually interested and attracted to someone I'm not, specifically who's trans, for me to date someone who's trans simply to be politically correct because that's what I should do, is just me being dishonest not only to myself, but that other person. If there's one thing that I despise, it's dishonesty. It's me, be, me being dishonest towards myself and me being dishonest towards someone else and leading them on to think differently, that I like them or that I'm interested in them, that I find them attractive or that I want to have sex with them. I don't want to do that. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, I know it was kind of a frustrating one to watch. There's also a lot of stuff and points that I did not address in this. Feel free in the comments below to address those flaws in this video. Also, those boxes in the corner that you see, I'm leaving for Hawaii in one day. My birthday is December 5th. Those boxes are your gifts that you guys have sent me to my P.O. box and also to off my Amazon wish list. I haven't opened them yet. I just want to say thank you for the people who have been ordering them. I do plan on filming an unboxing video of all the gifts that you guys have sent me. And to hoard myself out one more time, my Amazon link wish list is linked down below, the very first link. If you get me something, leave me a note, and you can definitely expect to see it in my next unboxing video sometime in December. Thank you for watching, and have a great rest of your day.